Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Thursday, December the 9th, and it's about 7.30 in the morning here in Toronto. And it's very dark, so I've just got a light shining in here. Uh, we're looking at a Raspberry Pi 4 and an RTL SDR. There's my uh, RTL SDR. It's version 2 metal case SMA connector, and I've just got a short whip antenna connected to it. I've also got a USB power meter on it. Right now it's running an application and it's drawing about 282 uh, milliamps. The RPi4, um, I use it for many things. Um, so rather than change or load a new software each time, basically I have uh, several SD cards. Like I have an SD card for OpenPlotter, because I do a lot of work with OpenPlotter, and I've got one for the Go satellite. Um, and then I've got one which I've just loaded. It's the new uh, Raspbian Bullseye operating system. So it's the latest version there. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some applications that you can use uh, to work with the RTL SDR on the Raspberry Pi 4. I've got the uh, Pi 4 set up on a local area network. When I use OpenPlotter I've got a, a headless operation so I can connect to it with Wi-Fi. But here I'm just using the LAN and I'm just going to go over to the laptop and we're going to talk to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've got an audio output here you got to be careful with this connector to um, wire it up correctly. I've got a, a separate video on YouTube about how to how to make that. Okay, so right now I'm uh, sitting in front of my laptop and I'm talking to the Raspberry Pi 4 over uh, the local area network. Um, I've got VNC viewer uh, going on my laptop and the Raspberry Pi has a VNC server. So to work with the RTL STR on the uh, the Raspberry Pi 4, over the course of the last two years, I've looked at a whole bunch of different applications that has specific software. For instance, AIS has a specific software, ADSB has a specific software, um, OpenCPN, all these programs have specific software. But let's say you have an application that you want to uh, uh, investigate or build yourself. So a good way to do that is to use GNU Radio. Now, I've done a lot of simulations using Psychos. Psychos is fantastic in the sense that you can build pretty well anything. Uh, the only thing that Psychos doesn't have is it doesn't have a lot of uh, interfaces to hardware. GNU Radio does have that. So let's look at that. So to install that, basically go here, down to Preferences, Add and Remove Software. And then all you have to do is type in GNU Radio type it into the search box and enter and it takes a while and you'll find uh, a whole bunch of packages appear so there we go now when when this screen comes up you're gonna see none of these check boxes will be checked so what I did is I just um, selected the first three so these things I've added later on but all you need are these top three in fact all you need is the first one but I added the development toolkit as well as well as the documentation so if you check these three uh, then you're good to go with GNU Radio. And after they're installed, you'll see as you scroll down later on that there'll be a whole bunch of other uh, boxes that'll be checked because they'll be automatically installed. But basically all you need is the first three. Okay, so that's, that's how to um, install that. While we're here, there's another application which is very useful. It's called GQRX, which is an excellent uh, receiver that you can use with the RTL. Uh, you can install that as well. And there it is there. So I've already installed it. So that's how you install it. Just check that box. Okay, so let's look at GNU Radio. I've got it open here. So uh, in GNU Radio, basically what happens when you start a new uh, schematic, you have this box and this box. Uh, the box opens up with a sample rate. The default is 32 kilo, kilo samples per second, and these are all blank. So what you have to do is, here I've got um, just a, a simple test. I'm taking the RTL, and I'm connecting it to a um, spectrum analyzer. Just look to the spectrum of the FM band. So what you would do is you would first you'd fill this out because you need to uh, give it a name and a file name and save it before you can actually run the program. So open this box by double clicking it and then you put in the file name here and give it a um, give it a name. Okay, so that's what the first thing you have to do. Now, 
these blocks here basically are located here on the right. You can you can uh, close this window here to give yourself more space. I've just opened it here. But the easiest way to do it is just to go into the search and type what you want. Let's, for instance, RTL. If I type in RTL, there's the RTL source there. So you just take that and drag it onto the block like that. Okay, so we already have it there, so you don't need it. Okay, so um, that's basically what you do there, is you find the elements you want. Um, so you can find these in there. Um, I've adjusted the sample rate for 2.4 mega samples per second. That's typical for the RTL. You can go up to 3.2, but 2.4 is typical. And I've created a variable called the center frequency. So down here, if you double click on it, you see the parameters. Um, these are the standard default gains. And uh, the center frequency uh, is default to 100 megahertz, but I, I put it in there as center frequency. I've given it a variable name. Okay, so when you're ready to go, I'm going to close this now just to give ourselves some more space. When you're ready to go, if there are any errors, this red circle here will notify you, and you can go to the bottom here, and down here it'll tell you what your errors are, the runtime errors. But here, if, it, if it's red, it'll tell you underneath what the problems are. So when you're ready to go, you compile there, and then you hit this um, triangle here, which executes the flow a diagram or the schematic. So there we have, uh, this is an FM spectrum uh, locally in Toronto here, centered at 104.5. Now, since the sample rate is 2.4, um, uh, I can only go a couple of megahertz on either side, okay? So that's that model. Here's another model I built. It's a narrow band uh, FM receiver for marine weather. Okay, now we saw that before. Uh, uh, with using Open Plotter, not using GNU Radio, but another application in Open Plotter. But here you can actually build one. So there's our RTL block. Uh, I'm using a low-pass filter to pick out a 25 kilohertz channel. In the marine band, the channel is 25 kilohertz wide, so that's what I'm doing here with a low-pass filter. I'm looking at the spectrum. And then I'm downloading the sample rate so that at the end, I've got an audio sync block here uh, the sample rate on my laptop for audio is 48 kilohertz, and I've got a volume control. And there's my N, narrow band FM receive module. So I can run that. Let's run that. Compile it first. This is not highlighted, so there are no errors. So I can run that. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I'll raise the volume. That's Toronto Marine Weather. And there's the uh, there's a signal at 162.4 megahertz. So finally, we have the uh, a wideband FM receiver. So basically, the same structure, the RTL. Sampling at 2.4 megahertz. This time the low-pass filter is the bandwidth of an FM channel. So I've set it up for about uh, 250 kilohertz, a bit wider than necessary. And again, we have the wideband receiver and an audio sync. We can compile that and then run it. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, that's Chum FM. Okay, so those are three models that we can use um, in GNU Radio. And like I say, you can build anything you want in here by just pulling over the right components and using the RTL block. Let's look at GQRX. It's a very useful receiver. So I go in here. Incidentally, you find the... Um, GNU radio, when you've installed it, you find the GNU radio companion here under programming. Now for the GQRX, it's located in internet. So there's GQRX. Now I've already started this once before, but when you first start the program, it'll ask you 
to find your interface here. So what you have to do is you have to look into uh, these various devices and find the RTL because there's all sorts of different options here. So you pick the um, your RTL, which in my case is the RTL 2838UHIDIR. So that's my uh, device. Okay, so I've already selected that. So let's uh, run this. So I've also selected this for marine weather. And there's three boxes here. There's the input connections, which allow you to do some IQ balancing and set the gain. And then there's a the receiver um, box here, which allows you to select AM or FM or narrowband or wideband, and then the FFT settings where you can adjust the frequency zoom, etc. So um, the GQRX is, is a, an excellent receiver to work with the RTL because it'll go over the full bandwidth of the receiver uh, and you have immediate access to uh, the spectrum. So those are two applications that you can use, use right away to play with the RTL on the Raspberry Pi. Both the um, RTL and the Raspberry Pi are small, uh, they take a little power, they're inexpensive, they're well documented, and they work well with each other, and they're very, very flexible. So they're a great combination.